Hey everybody, this is CryptoZRS Plus and my name is Noah. In today's video, I want to discuss reasons why the summer sell-off thesis has now been confirmed and whether or not the Bitcoin bull market is cancelled. Before we dive into the reasons why Bitcoin has displayed such dismal price action since its early January peak at 71500 let's first take a look at the current market conditions starting with a top-down analysis on the Bitcoin chart. Starting with the high time frame monthly chart, you can see that Bitcoin is forming a swing failure pattern here having failed to break through 71500 resistance and it has now fallen below a key support level which it had held for several months at about 61000 61, is a significant support level on the monthly chart because of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven interactions with this level before finally falling below it on the eighth attempt, making this a key level for Bitcoin to reclaim before the monthly candle closes at the end of July. If Bitcoin is able to close a monthly candle above 61,100, it increases the likelihood that Bitcoin will retest the highs at 71,500 over the next several months. However, if Bitcoin closes below this level, it obviously increases the odds of more price action in this area. Moving down to the weekly chart, you can see that Bitcoin is in the process of forming a potential bearish double top reversal pattern with the neckline of the pattern coming in at about 61,300 just above the major support level on the monthly chart. Double top patterns are bearish trend reversal patterns that tend to appear at the top of a major trend and signal a reversal of the trend from bullish to bearish. Here you can see the, the pattern is formed with two tops and a neckline in the middle and the pattern is confirmed with candle closes below the neckline of the pattern. Switching over to the current Bitcoin chart, you can see that Bitcoin is in danger of closing a weekly candle below the neckline at 61,300, which would confirm this with a close below 61,300 by tomorrow afternoon at 7 p.m. Central Time. To get the measured move of this pattern, you take the highs down to the neckline, which is about 16%, and then measure from the neckline down an additional 16%, which would put us right in this support zone here around $50,000 if the pattern is to confirm. Moving on to the daily chart, you can see that Bitcoin is bouncing today, attempting to hold the lows here at about 56500 which would be a positive development if Bitcoin is able to close daily candles above this level. Additionally, Bitcoin is battling with a 200 daily moving average here, another significant technical level for Bitcoin to reclaim on the daily chart. Additionally, one final technical indicator to take into account on the daily chart is a 50 in the 100 daily moving averages as the moving averages are in danger of crossing over following a long period of time with the 50 moving average above the 100. When the short term trend moves below the longer term trend it indicates that the recent price momentum is weakening compared to the longer term trend suggesting potential downward pressure on the markets. On the daily chart you can see that the 50 daily moving average is in danger of falling below the 100 here which could signal more downside leading us again into the support level which would coincide with the price target of the double top pattern on the weekly chart. A couple of weeks ago when Bitcoin's price was about 60,000, I presented the medium term bearish thesis or the summer sell-off thesis, which was confirmed with rejection at 71,500 and has now solidified itself even more with Bitcoin's price having fallen 20% from its recent highs in early June. Although it is possible that 53,500 was the lows for the summer sell-off thesis, I still believe there's a high probability that Bitcoin will fall into the 52, 5,000 to 47,500 range due to various macroeconomic headwinds simmering just below the surface. In my opinion, a dead cap pounce to a significant technical level like the 200 daily moving average, 61,500 resistance, or even the 50 and 100 moving averages in the mid 60s would make a lot of sense to me due to the macroeconomic headwinds that we will discuss now. While Bitcoin and crypto charts are showing some strength in the short term, it is hard to imagine the strength sustaining throughout the summer due to the precarious position that the Federal Reserve is in with their dual mandate to keep poor inflation levels and unemployment rate under control. Although the labor market has remained relatively stable throughout the Federal Reserve's rate hike cycle, I would argue that this is because the labor market is the last sector of the economy to react to a change in rate. Using this hope chart as a roadmap for how the economy responds to changes in rate, you can see that employment is the most lagging part of the economy with housing 
housing the first is slow, new orders second, profits third, and finally employment. Additionally, looking at the y-axis, you can see that we are reaching the part of the rate hike cycle where employment should start to deteriorate as we are now about two years out from the Fed's first rate cut back in 2022. Checking in on a few key labor market indicators, you can see that jobless claims have now risen to their highest level since 2021. May and April jobs reports were just revised lower with the unemployment rate now at 4.1%, providing evidence that the labor market is now deteriorating despite its strength over the past two years. In fact, following last week's weaker than expected labor market data, the probability for a rate cut in September has now risen to 72%, the highest odds that we have seen in some time. And I know what a lot of you are thinking at this point. If the labor market is deteriorating and the Federal Reserve must cut rates, isn't that bullish for Bitcoin and crypto? In my opinion, the reason people believe rate cuts will be bullish is because they are the opposite of rate hikes, which were bearish. And I don't believe that is what we'll see. In fact, looking at this table, you can see that in the past, any rate cut that has come because of recessionary conditions has resulted in a significant decline in the markets with the 1990 recession resulting in a 19% decline in three months, the 2001 recession resulting in an 18% decline in three months, and the 2007 recession resulting in a 14% decline in six months after the first rate cut, which is evidence that a rate cut amidst recessionary conditions or a rate cut forced by rising unemployment will not be bullish for the markets. Overall, in my opinion, the deterioration of the labor market, which will likely force the Federal Reserve to cut rates over the next several months, will result in a medium-term bearish thesis for Bitcoin, likely sending its price down into this support area between 47k and 52.5k, which I believe will be the final low for the summer sell-off thesis if things play out as expected. In addition to the labor market, the Federal Reserve is also responsible for inflation, and I expect inflation to make the Federal Reserve's job more difficult, with U.S. inflation expectations suddenly spiking to new highs, and the U.S. CPI setting up for a potential resurgence higher, just like we saw back in the 1970s, as inflation tends to move in waves, growing very stubborn in this area around 2 to 3%, just above the Fed's target inflation rate. If the Federal Reserve is forced to cut interest rates amid deteriorating conditions in the labor market and surging inflation, which is technically a stagflationary environment, it will not bode well for Ethereum and altcoins for the rest of the summer. On the weekly chart, Ethereum is in danger of printing the same bearish trend reversal pattern as Bitcoin with a double top pattern forming on the weekly chart, which will be confirmed with weekly candle closes below the neckline of the pattern at 2,900, making this a critical level for Ethereum to hold before the weekly close tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Time. Also of significance is Ethereum's Bitcoin valuation, which measures Ethereum's strength against Bitcoin and can be used as an indicator for risk on appetite in the markets as Ethereum comes with more regulatory and technological risk than Bitcoin does. In previous cycles, once Ethereum broke above the 200 moving average on the Ethereum Bitcoin chart, Ethereum and altcoins then outperformed Bitcoin for the rest of the cycle. You can see that Bitcoin is at the part of the cycle where it's just about to break above the 200, signaling an alt season for the rest of the cycle. However, if you zoom in closer, you can see that Bitcoin is struggling to clear above the 200, suggesting that this move here could have been just another fake out like we saw in the past, which could eventually result in a new low for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation if it is not able to reclaim this area here at the 200 moving average. In my opinion, for a clear indication that we will see a full-blown alt season, Ethereum Bitcoin must climb above 0.06 here to prove that this is not just another fake out and that it will sustainably hold above the 200 just like it did back in 2020 and 2021. Additionally, I am noticing several bearish reversal patterns on altcoin charts suggesting that alt season, although around the corner, is not yet here. For example, on the chain link chart, you can see that the bearish head and shoulders pattern is approaching its target following a breach of its 200 moving average earlier in June. Matic is showing significant weakness having confirmed a bear flag pattern on the weekly and daily chart. Avalanche additionally has confirmed a bear flag pattern. And finally, Stacks, one of the strongest altcoins of 2023, has also confirmed a head and shoulders pattern, lost its 200 daily moving average, and has now given up significant gains, losing over 60% of its value since its peak in early 2024. Although the charts are suggesting it is not yet alt season, even with an Ethereum ETF launch just a few days away, some altcoins are holding up better than others. For example, in contrast to the
the other altcoins I just showed you, Solana remains above its 200 daily moving average following a test of 120 support area, suggesting that Solana could still move higher here if it is able to hold above its 200 and this critical support level between 120 and 130. Additionally, Solana ecosystem projects are showing some life. The bonk trade that I presented to you guys last week in Patreon has still somehow not been invalidated yet, despite the biggest liquidation event since the FTX collapse, suggesting that there could still be some upside on bonk if it is able to hold above its 200, perhaps climbing up to the trade target as projected last week. Additionally, WIF is showing some strength here, forming a potential double bottom pattern on the daily chart following a decline of over 50% from its local high. If WIF can close daily candles above the neckline here, it will confirm the pattern, suggesting more upside into the $3 range. Although the summer sell-off thesis has been confirmed and the medium-term bearish thesis is still in play with price targets between 47k and 52k, Bitcoin's chart structure still remains long-term bullish. Referencing the gold triple top fractal, which I've shown you guys several times over the past month, you can see that Bitcoin is forming a similar pattern here with one, two, three tops, followed by a deviation below the 200 moving average, which then acted as a spring to send gold's price to a new all-time high. So far, Bitcoin is following this pattern exactly, already deviating below its 200. In my opinion, a test of 52k would complete the gold fractal, setting Bitcoin's price up for a move to a new all-time high in 2025, keeping the long-term bullish thesis intact. Finally, one more indicator that the Bitcoin bull market is not canceled despite the confirmation of the summer sell-off thesis is that Bitcoin MVRVZ score, a metric used to judge how undervalued or overvalued Bitcoin is. As you can see on this chart, Bitcoin tends to reach into the red area at market cycle tops. And Bitcoin is not even halfway to the red area yet, suggesting that the cycle is not even halfway over and that the bull market is not yet, in fact, canceled. Overall, although the summer sell-off thesis has been confirmed with a rejection off of 71,500 resistance, sending the price all the way down below a key technical level at 60,000, the long-term bullish thesis also remains intact and the Bitcoin bull market has not yet been canceled with much more explosive price action expected in 2025 after the Federal Reserve is able to cut rates and return to easier monetary conditions. Like the information presented in today's video, please consider signing up for the Cryptos RS Patreon for more in-depth analysis. Additionally, if you are interested in trading, you can do so on TapBit again by visiting a link in the description below. Other than that, I hope everybody has a great weekend and I will see you back here next week for more charts and analysis. Thanks for watching everybody.